Welcome to this edition of Investment Insights. Today, I have Rob Kavanagh with me. Welcome, Rob. Hi. We're now halfway through the year. How have the major asset classes such as shares and bonds performed so far in 2021? The first half of the year has been very strong, with share markets around the world posting positive returns as the global economic recovery continues. Over this period, we saw some economies start to reopen as vaccine rollouts continue to surprise on the upside, but new variant scares and outbreaks continue to be a threat. One notable outlier to these positive returns has been the New Zealand share market, which after a decade of outperforming, has lagged the global market by about 20% over the past six months, with the NZX50 returning negative 3.3%. Also struggling year to date has been the bond sector, which has been impacted by rising interest rates and inflation concerns, which I'll touch on shortly. But thankfully, the strong performance from overseas share markets has offset this. As you can see on the screen, the overall returns for the funds for the past year to date have been very strong. Rob, and what are some of the themes we're expecting for the rest of the year? And what's the outlook for investment markets? We believe that we're still in the early stages of a strong recovery, and the remainder of 2021 will provide a supportive environment for growth assets like shares. Firstly, vaccines have been rolled out at a much faster pace than anticipated, especially in the US and the UK. And in many regions, the vaccine programs have been targeted at the most vulnerable parts of the population, which means even if COVID-19 continues to spread, hospitalizations and fatalities should reduce. Secondly, as we progress to full reopenings, it is expected to unleash a mini boom as pent up demand is released and savings are spent. And finally, we expect policymakers to keep interest rates at low levels and be committed to step in and help economies stay afloat and stabilise markets in the case of a temporary setback. This positive backdrop is not free from risk, however, and there are a number of things that we're keeping a close eye on at the moment. Risks associated with COVID-19 are key. While some countries are at the stages of reopening, we have seen outbreaks lead to restrictions and tightenings in other countries such as Australia, Singapore and Japan. Another area of risk is geopolitical risk, which has been re-emerging recently, with some examples being the conflict between Israel and Palestinians in the Gaza Strip and the forced grounding of a European passenger plane in Belarus. Is inflation becoming a bit of a threat? Well, there's been a lot of media attention around the threat of inflation lately, and it's something that we're keeping a close eye on. Being mindful that there's a number of different scenarios that could play out. Whether it's high inflation, target level inflation, or even deflation, which is the opposite of inflation. Recently, we've seen higher than expected levels of inflation in some countries, coming from a very low base and due to pent up demand, supply chain issues, and tight labor markets. However, this may be short term or transitory in nature. And in New Zealand, we haven't seen this yet, with inflation for the year to March at 1.5%. But we expect this to pick up for the remainder of this year. If we do see sustained inflationary pressure and the economy is strong, there's a good chance that we will see rates rise, but at a gradual pace. This will create a headwind for bonds that are directly impacted. And this is why our funds hold slightly less than they usually do. Our diversified approach also means that we hold other assets that will benefit and provide a hedge in this scenario, such as inflation-linked bonds, commodities, and infrastructure.